All right, let's continue our journey through the cell. First stop is our last organelle, the nucleus. That is a dark, large sphere that houses our genetic material, our DNA, which is our hereditary or our hereditary characteristics. Uh, one gene is codes, is a DNA material that codes for one protein. So the genetic material, the DNA, is really a cookbook for proteins. Most of our cells have one nucleus. Some have multiple, like the blood, I mean the um, muscle cells, are long cells that are fused together, stem cells fused together, and so the nuclei within those fused cells remains, and so they end up having more than one. There is uh, some cells, red blood cells, do not have a nucleus. Uh, they don't need to be able to divide because they just get recycled and made fresh. They, they live just a short period and all they do is carry oxygen. So it's more important that we take the nucleus out of them and, and be able to have more hemoglobin, carry more oxygen um, through those cells, the red blood cells. The nucleus uh, consists of two elementary membranes that has many pores in them and therefore the membranes will create a boundary to the cytoplasm. Within the nucleus is a small area that's called the nucleolus and the nucleolus is a place where we make ribosomal RNA. Ribosomal RNA are basically the ribosome units, the organelle of a ribosome that then creates the protein. But since we make use the ribosomes to make protein, the original ribosomes that can then do that, those protein factories, need to be made somewhere, and that is the nucleus, or the nucleolus, sorry. There you go. That's how you see a cell. The center is the nucleus uh, on the top left. You see a picture of a cell with a nucleus that's blue stained up on the top right. Let's go a little bit more into this genetic material stuff, the chromosomes and the genes. The chromosomes are the carriers of our hereditary characteristic. One gene contains the information to make one protein. So, as I said before, therefore, the, pro the, the, the chromosomes are the cookbook to make proteins. We have 30, 46 chromosomes. We are known to, our chromosomes are diploid, because what we do is we have two sets, a maternal one and a paternal one, of the same. So, we have 23 chromosomes times 2 gives us 46. If we were haploids, we would only have one set of those chromosomes, not two. Of course, you have an ability to, if you have two copies, that's uh, safer than only one copy. Uh, we humans have about 30 to 40,000 genes that are packed in a DNA double helix. And that, if we take that DNA double helix and spread it all out, it's about two meters long. Two meters, one meter is approximately one yard. So about six feet in length. All right, well, this two meter long DNA double helix needs to be very well organized. What we do is we coil the DNA around proteins called histones. Let's have a look here. On the bottom right, you see a bowl of spaghetti. Uh, that is actually a nucleus cut in half, and the spaghetti is the DNA material. We can call them as a, as a whole, we call them chromatin. Uh, and we take these chromatin strands and wrap them around those histones. Uh, as you can see that on the middle picture, on uh, the middle section of the bottom right picture there. Mm -hmm. uh, and those histones, um, together with the chromatin, we call them nucleosomes. We don't need to worry about that in our term. But all then wrapped off gives us, gives us basically a condensed chromosome. 
Uh, and that's sort of how we knew, how we know the genetic material to look. And then we can look at these different chromosomes. Um, one of the legs of that chromosome is considered being one chromatid. Uh, and in between, at the center, where the two legs cross, um, like in an X, that place, the crossing, is called the central mirror. Uh, that becomes very important as we divide the cell. So when we need to make protein, we need to read the DNA, a gene, we need to uncoil that part of the DNA double helix cookbook that holds that gene, and then we need to make a copy of that portion of that genetic material. And then that copy, we ship out to the nucleus into the ribosome, and guess what? We make protein there. So we'll, we'll talk about that coming up. Let's look at the genetic code. We remember that proteins are polypeptide chains. So the primary structure of proteins are amino acids put one after the other, like in, beat, in a beat, chain of beads, uh, and connect them. Um, a gene gives us a pro, pro, is a cookbook for one protein. That's a gene. That's the definition of that. Keep that in mind. When we look at the DNA double helix, we have two nucleotide strands that uh, are connected via hydrogen bonds that are the, the, the rungs of that double helix. And um, we have nucleotide base pairs, complementary base pairs, that are creating those hydrogen bonds. And the complementary pairs are adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine. As I said, as from Latin mnemonic, for me, is A, T, and T goes together. And G and C are both rounded letters. They also go together. But now this is where it gets very, very interesting. Three nucleotide base pairs in sequence code for one specific amino acid. They call that a triplet because it's three, as in tri, or they also call it a codon. So when I, for example, take the nucleotides that have the first letter G, A, T, guanine, adenine, and thymine, if they go in sequence, that will code for the amino acid asparagine. If I have one that codes as an adenine, adenine, and then a guanine, that will be an amino acid lysine. So if we look about the combinations we have out of four nucleotides, we get 64 combinations we can have. But we only have 20 amino acids we need to worry about, and then we need a start sequence and a stop sequence, uh, and that's all we need, and so we're doing pretty well. The pictures here, I uh, top left is the protein, uh, top bottom left is a DNA double helix. In the center picture, you see on top the beads of amino acids, just sequence of amino acids after amino acid. But the picture that I kind of really like uh, is the top right, shows you sections in genes on chromosomes, so that's how we can map them out uh, on maps. Uh, and on the bottom right, you see the codons. You see how these base pairs on that single helix now, not a double helix, they took the other rank wrong out, how those base pairs go and then they code for a specific all right, let's leave it at that for right now. We'll go to part four to look at protein synthesis, and hopefully we'll cover mitosis in that one also.